Hey guys, this is Earthling 6455463728 and I wanted to talk about programming ourselves and stopping conditions. So what are those things exactly? What am I talking about? Well, I do computer programming and one of the cool things about computer programming is that you can see in a way, how we think and how we figure things out. Meaning that if you need to get a computer to do something, there are programming languages that we use. And in those programming languages, you have to you use that to explain to the computer how we do stuff. And you instruct it, and similarly, to do something similar. So there are... Basically, I'm sure many of you would have heard about like flowcharts where if this, then do that, and if that, then do this, or for example, um, do this 200 times until this other thing happens. So basically, um, from that, you can look at a human being and you can realize, well, wait, we... we as human beings, we kind of gloss over things because we've done it so many times that asking us to break it down and say, okay, how do you do this? Well, you know, you just do it. And if you're just talking to another human being, a lot of the times they completely understand what you mean. If you're training somebody, not so much. And then it can become difficult because you forget what it was like to learn something. But, um... Anyway, one of the things that uh, comes up when you are programming is uh, for loops or loops. Basically, you're doing a sequence of actions over and over and over until certain conditions are met and then you stop. So if you look at it, we do that in our everyday life and programs do that as well. So, for example, if you ask a program to find um, a particular word in a text, it would check every single word until it comes to the word that you asked it to find. It makes a, gets a match, and then it stops. And um, one of the important things for ourselves and for programs is knowing or putting a stopping condition. If you don't put the correct stopping condition for a program, it usually just keeps growing forever, forever and ever until the program crashes. It just takes up too many resources and then the program will crash. And to an extent, the same thing happens with us as well. Um, if you exercise too much, well actually that's one that that someone said is there was a study recently and they were saying almost that you can't exercise too much but actually I guess you can if you don't sleep and you don't rehabilitate yourself if you leave that out of your loop then yeah I'm sure that you can crash because I know for myself that's what happened I was exercising a lot but sleep wasn't part of my loop it wasn't I wasn't getting sufficient sleep so any injuries that I had, they weren't getting repaired. I wasn't healing properly. So at, at some point, you know, I, I decided, let me still do push-ups. Let me still do as many push-ups as I can in a particular go, even though my arm feels a little bit worse than it did yesterday or the day before that. And then one morning you get up and, and my arm was dead and was hurting just, just to do anything. I'm talking about if I walked fast, and it hit the side of my leg, it hurt. Just just the vibration of my body <laughs> made it hurt because I was in a loop. And this, is, this comes to what I'm talking about, the stopping condition. The stopping condition in my case was my arm wasn't working anymore. And I guess that's part of what I want to talk about. I want to talk about stopping conditions. Um, if you don't, well, I think I said that already. Um, if you don't set up the right stopping conditions for yourself, 
what's going to happen is that you're going to crash. Things are not going to go well and you're going to end up crashing. Um, but let's say with respect to gaining weight, that's kind of what I did. You know, uh, I kind of pulled out the stopping conditions for myself. That's one of the things that happened when I gained a bunch of weight. Um, previously, I suppose, um, I would have had, and, and I guess that's one of the ways that people can end up gaining weight or just being big altogether. Um, I had a friend, uh, and I think that being friends with him kind of helped me to gain weight eventually because he had a kind of philosophy that okay, I don't have a lot of money, so anytime I have an opportunity to eat, I'm just going to eat as much as I can. And I kind of adopted that to a degree. You know, I just ate as much as I can, and I, I kind of stuffed myself. And I guess, you know, for in our evolution, one of the things that um, food didn't really always taste that great. Foods were not designed by chemists and and food scientists because that that's one of the goals that, that they have you know to make foods addictive and they fine-tune the taste and the flavors of things to make us want more and more and more so for example I think a way to um, to prevent yourself from eating the rest of that cake Let's say you took a slice of cake and you said, oh, okay, I'm just going to have this and, and that's it. You need to go and rinse your mouth. I think that they've set it up. They've designed flavors to, to stay in our mouth. They probably know the pH of the, our saliva. And if you go and wash your mouth out, then, you know, that might prevent you from thinking of the cake. It's worked with me. Um, the amount of portions that we have. Normally, we often eat until we hit the, the end of the container, the bottom of the container. So if you're eating, and I think that's another way that we end up gaining weight and keeping weight on that we don't want, is we put out these huge portions and we end up eating until we reach the bottom of the bowl or the bottom of the bag. If you just put a small portion and you reach the bottom of the thing, and you're like, oh, there's no more. And coincidentally, you realize, wait, I am not really hungry anymore. Then that's great. But a lot of times, we are just on autopilot. From the container to your mouth. From the plate to your mouth. From, you know, the cone, you lick it in your mouth. Or ice cream, whatever it is. So, I think... In programming ourselves, especially when it comes to food, we really do need to design the loops that we make in terms of eating, in terms of getting that next bit of cake or whatever it is. We need to make smaller loops, like make the container size smaller so that when we're done and we hit the bottom, we haven't eaten like you know, twice as much calories as we need in a particular day. Um, and if you do want more, you go back and you put more. You know, you can have three helpings maybe. But whereas if you had had the whole bag, you might have eaten ten helpings. If you have smaller portions and you have to go back ten times, maybe at seven, maybe at five, maybe at three, you don't want any more. As opposed to just continuing to eat because there's more to eat. Or, for example, trying to fend off the loops that these food scientists have made. Whereby they have, okay, let that flavor linger in their mouth. And then in 10 minutes, they're going to want another slice of cake. They're going to want more Pringles. They're going to want more nuts. We need to cut the loops that they have made to try to program us into eating more. Like, okay, five minutes pass. So go and wash your mouth. Go and get that flavor out of your mouth so that it's not lingering in there and making you want to eat some more. Or, for example, if you know that you need to get up and run, 
I, I sometimes I fool myself into to thinking, okay, and I know that I'm fooling myself and it doesn't make any difference. I will say, you know what? What I want to do is just sit down here and watch TV. Yeah, because you're in a loop. We call that a rut, right? I tell myself, listen, this loop doesn't have to end. I am just going to stand up for 10 seconds and then I'm going to sit back down and watch TV. But you know what? By telling yourself that you're not really getting out of the loop, you don't have to... We all resistant to stopping that loop, you know, unless something happens, unless the program is over, unless electricity goes. One of those things that happens that forces us. But the next way is you just tell yourself that we're going to continue the loop. This is just a momentary delay. But by the time you stand up, you realize, whoa, is that my, my back feels different. And then your thoughts go away. And if you were going to exercise or whatever you're going to do, you're a little bit closer to that loop and a little bit further away from the last loop. And it becomes a little bit easier to get into a new loop. We love being in that loop and just doing what we were doing. So for me, I noticed that just by fooling myself into thinking that I'm not really stopping, a lot of times I can just flip, flip over into doing what I was really planning on doing, but I probably would not have done because of the pain of stopping one thing and starting something else. You know, it's a certain amount of momentum and a certain amount of inertia that we build up from doing something over and over and over and over, even if it's something that we didn't originally want to do. Originally, we had no desire to do it, but once you're in it, you build up that momentum, you build up that inertia, as I said, and next thing you know, you find yourself in another loop, and it's by tricking yourself. You know you're tricking yourself, but it doesn't make any difference, even though you know that it's a trick, you know? Or you might be serious, just so that you can continue to believe yourself. And you seriously just stand up. But once you stand up, you might be like, okay, well, I don't need to. Or maybe this time I'll just sit back down. But the next time. So this is just something that from my experience, from my um, experience as a programmer, I've learned is something that I can do is something that I need to find what the stopping conditions are and I need to think ahead to make sure that I'm not putting myself into an infinite loop especially a, a detrimental infinite loop you know if if even if I am in a favorable loop like exercising I probably need to add in enough time between exercising or I probably need to add, add in enough time to sleep. Or I probably need to make sure that I am eating well so that the loop can continue and I'm not going to injure myself and have to stop because of that stopping condition, you know? So anyway, guys, I don't know if this might be useful to you, but like I said before, wish me good luck. Like or unlike, comment, subscribe, and or share. Please. Um, talk to you later. Peace.